Okay, uh, looks like everybody's ready to go. And uh, certainly, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for being here this morning to join in uh, this, I think, very important announcement uh, for St. Louis. And uh, something that uh, will, I believe, impact a lot of people uh, who live and work in the city, who do business in the city. And I think it's something that, uh, certainly something I'm very, very excited about. And certainly want to thank all the different organizations and people who are here uh, to weigh in and to be involved in the discussion on the issue. Our country is supposed to be a land of opportunity, where hard work is rewarded, where people who put in an honest day's work and play by the rules can afford to make ends meet. But that's a tall order for today's minimum wage. In Missouri, a full-time minimum wage worker will earn less than $16,000. Here's the problem. The real value of the minimum wage has fallen by a third since its peak in 1968. So earning the current minimum wage is in fact below the minimum. It's simply not enough to get by. Just ask Latasha Chapel and Kelly Boggs, who you'll hear from in just a moment. Think about it, $16,000 to put a roof over your head, food on the table, clothes on your back, and transportation to work, just to name a few. Now, here's a solution. Raise the minimum wage. Until Congress decides to act on behalf of the 28 million Americans who earn less than $10.10 an hour, President Obama has asked all of us who are in a position to do so to raise the minimum wage. The concept is not new. When Henry Ford more than doubled the wages of his workers when he built the Model T, he said no one loses anything by raising wages as, so as soon as he is able. It, is always paid, it, is, it has always paid us. Low wages are the most costly any employer can pay. It's like using low-grade material. The waste makes it very expensive in the end. The people of St. Louis deserve a raise. It's the right and fair thing to do. The, there is no question that we need a minimum wage. That was settled 75 years ago. The only questions are what the minimum wage should be, when it should be raised, and at what rate. That's what Alderman Shane Cohn, sponsor of Board Bill 83, and longtime advocate for a higher minimum wage, will ask the Board of Aldermen to consider over the next weeks. America needs all kinds of workers to create a robust economy, but each and every one of them should be able to cover the basics for themselves and their families so long as they are willing to work hard. Amen. Raising the minimum wage will also expand opportunity and reduce inequality. More than 84% of those who benefit are older workers. Less than 16% are teenagers. They are also disproportionately women. According to the Economic Policy Institute, raising the minimum wage would give more than one in four working moms and almost 40% of single moms a raise. If a single mother is working two or three jobs to make ends meet, she's able to spend very little time raising her children. So we shouldn't be so, so surprised when they fall into the wrong crowd and get into trouble with the law. That creates a very vicious cycle. There is dignity and value in having a job. It is not only measured in the hours that you put in or the services that you render. Dignity is achieved when that single mother has enough money in her pocket to pay for the basic necessities so that she can, so that she gets home to her children at a decent hour and helps them with their homework. Dignity is when a family has some money left over to put, put to the side so that they can grow some equity for a child's future college education and for an emergency medical situation. Mikey Carrasco has recognized that and has raised his, the wages for his workers at Taco Circus. You'll hear from him in just a moment. A wage increase will give workers like a single mother a better chance at creating better lives for themselves and for their families. 
we recognize an increase in the minimum wage as a way to ease the burden on tax-funded services, to grow the economy, to give more people more money to make ends meet, and to spend more time in our local shops and restaurants. Raising the minimum wage helps build an economy that works for everyone. Everyone who works hard deserves to make a living. Achieving the American dream shouldn't be a nightmare of impossibility. Missouri Jobs with Justice and people like Ruth Erzman are helping with helping every city and county in our state recognize these realities. I thank them for their tireless effort. You know, we have high hopes for and, and uh, we are excited about our future, one that helps thousands of St. Louis Louisans on their journey toward a, building a better future for themselves. I look forward to hearing from all the stakeholders and interested parties as we work to stimulate the economy, reduce inequality, and expand opportunity. This time, I will turn the microphone over to Alderman Shane Cohn, who is the sponsor of the um, Board Bill 83 and someone who's been a longtime advocate for minimum wage. Alderman Shane Cohn. Thank you, Mayor. I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank Mayor Slay for his leadership on this issue as well. Uh, and for everyone who's here today uh, working on behalf of the American worker. We in this room understand the plight of the American worker, the plight of the American family and the middle class right now. Simply put, 765 is not enough to survive. So. As the mayor mentioned, $7.65 an hour is less than $16,000 a year. That is not enough for a single individual to put a roof over their head or food in their stomach, let alone to provide for a family. It is a moral imperative that this country take a serious look at how we treat our workers. I, as an American, do not believe that anyone who works a full-time schedule should have to struggle with basic realities of life, whether that's housing, food, nurturing your children, or an education, and let alone being able to save for your future. We too often time neglect those that are in entry level or what people call unskilled jobs. Just because someone wasn't able to have the same opportunities in life as someone else does not mean that they deserve to work for substandard wages and not be able to provide for themselves and this economy. We have a consumer-driven economy that bases its growth off of how much an individual consumer can spend. When people have more money in their pockets to spend, our economy has grown. And historically speaking, you see those numbers that inflation continues to grow. So raising the wage, the federal wage has been raised three times in the last 30 years. Inflation continues year over year, regardless of the growth in the minimum wage. Right now, that wage is subpar. It is substandard, and it provides for a sub substandard quality of life for the residents and workers in the city of St. Louis, this region, this state, and this country. As President Obama has called on Congress to act, he has also called on leaders across this country to do the same. As I mentioned before, I believe this is a moral imperative. It's the right thing to do. We have an obligation to take care of people who are willing and wanting to earn a living and take care of themselves. There is a very real political reality with this board bill. Board Bill 83 is going to be introduced this Friday. I fully expect to have conversations with everyone, ranging from those who are fully supportive of it to those who are diametrically opposed to it. I plan on working with everyone to make sure that this bill supports the values of the citizens of the city of St. Louis, that it works to help grow our city, our economy, and businesses that are with, within the city. I look forward to working with everyone in this room and even those uh, who may not have been able to attend today. And I want to thank my colleagues down at the Board of Aldermen for their leadership and support on this issue as well. 
I know many of them have already signed up as co-sponsors, and I know many of them are still seeking answers to questions while we go through the legislative process before actually becoming co-sponsors. Um, and you know, to that end, we'll look forward to working with them through that process as well. So with that, I do want to introduce a longtime advocate and friend of mine as well, Ruth Erisman. Thank you. Good morning. I, I am so pumped to be here. I have to tell you, as an aside from my, my prepared remarks, um, when I started working with low-income families in my neighborhood in 1983, we began working on a living wage ordinance. Holy cow. <laughs> it's been a long time, and this is a terrific day. So my name is Ruth Erisman. I'm a co-chair of the St. Louis Workers' Rights Board for Jobs with Justice. And Missouri Jobs with Justice would, would like to thank Mayor Slay and Alderman Cohen and the, the co-sponsors in the Board of Aldermen and President Lewis Reed for their leadership in standing up for working families in St. Louis. Missouri Jobs with Justice believes that every worker deserves to be paid enough to care for his or her family. This is a bottom line value of Jobs with Justice. With other community leaders, I've had the privilege of being on the front lines with Latasha and the other low-wage workers. I've marched with them and chanted with them and delivered letters to their employers, informing them that they were engaging in, in legal strike activities, and I've walked back with workers after they've struck. I'm proud to stand with them, as is jobs, all of Jobs with Justice. We thank the fast food workers for their amazing activism and the courage that has helped keep this issue on the front page and the radar screen for months on end. Without them, we would not be where we are today. All of the people who prepare and serve our food, who check out our groceries, who clean our offices, who care for our kids, and who care for our elderly, deserve to be paid a decent wage for the work they do. This, this is... The work that they do is valuable work, and it's work that keeps our community running. Uh, we owe them a living wage. In addition to my volunteer work for um, Jobs with Justice, I also work at Vision for Children at Risk. And unfortunately, one, one of the greatest risk factors for kids is poverty. And poverty just, it, it is not a mere inconvenience for kids and for their families. Kids who are poor get sick more often. They miss school more often. They're less likely to finish high school. They're less likely to start college. They're more likely to drop out. They're more likely to earn less as adults. And they're more likely to die young. That's criminal. Low wages lock families and their kids into patterns of income inequality and also opportunity gaps that take the American dream out of reach of these families. By raising the minimum wage, we offer a path toward a life where that American dream can come, become a reality. So Jobs with Justice is very excited to take these meaningful first steps to establish a minimum wage. And we're very excited to be part of work where families, economic security is a priority in our community. We look forward to working with the mayor and, and with Alderman Cohen and the rest of the Board of Aldermen and the fast food workers and other low-wage workers to, to, um, to make this a reality and to achieve victory. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for all that you do. We would not be here without you.
And, and it's my pleasure to introduce the next three speakers who, who really are folks who are living where the rubber meets the road. Latasha Chapel works at Wendy's. Um, Kelly Boggs is, is a, a, works in a local grocery store. And Mikey Carrasco owns Taco Circus. And they're each going to speak to you about their own experience um, around this important issue. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Latasha Chapel, and I'm 33 years old. Ooh. I work at Wendy's here in St. Louis. I've been in the fast food company ever since they've been making $5.25 an hour. And just because it's up went up to $7.65, it's really not enough. I've been surviving and struggling off of minimum wages for a while. I have a, three children. I have a 16-year-old that's also in fast food where I had to go to him sometime, and I don't want to, to ask for his help to survive and for his food, for his sisters, help with the rent, help with the bills, and also a partner that also work at Wendy's, and I had to also go to her and have her to help me with bills. We struggle a lot. We also give $209 worth of food stamps, which is not enough to survive off of for a month of feeding teenagers. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. And I also had to go to pantries. I had to go to churches to get my bills paid. And fighting for 15 is a better opportunity for me because I know we're going to win. And I believe we're going to win. And it's going to be a helpful to everybody out here that's struggling like me as a mom. Thank you. My name is Kelly Boggs, and um, I've worked at uh, my grocery store for three years. Um, everybody that starts, starts out on minimum wage. And it is a good job, but it's a good job only for a few people um, who are guaranteed uh, full-time hours. So every week I struggled just to even get hours or put on the schedule. Um, I look all the time for other jobs, but actually full-time jobs are really hard to come by. So. Just recently, um, I moved, and every landlord that wants me to be able to prove in check stubs that I can make three times the rent, I can't find a single apartment in the city of St. Louis that shows that I make that, because I don't make three times the rent. Um, if we just raise the minimum wage, it will help everyone. It'll help everybody that's in my union. It'll help everyone who's not. Like We just need to start off at a higher rate, because you can't make it, even if you like, I am protected within uh, my union, so I do get raises at a certain amount of time based on how many hours you work. But if um, my company doesn't give you enough hours, it can take over a year just to get your first raise. Um, so I don't know. I really think we do. We need to increase it because, I mean, I love living in the city, but I can't survive. And I want, like, not only myself to survive, but every single person um, that works. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, everybody here, um, the mayor's office, you guys, um, just everybody involved. Um, my name is Mikey Carrasco, and I own Taco Circus in South City, St. Louis. Um, and uh, we're a new local business. Um, we're less than four months old. Um, just, a, just, just a year ago, I was working lots of hours with little to show for it. Pretty, pretty skilled labor, you know, cooking a lot of food and stuff like that. Um, and so it's, this, this is so important to us because we were literally just there. Now we're, now we're business owners, but we're not that far on the other side of the fence right now, you know what I mean? So, so um, the quality of life is very important. And if people don't have money to have a quality life, then the whole environment around is going to be bad. And everything's related, you know, um, education, incarceration, nutrition, livable wages, environment, everything, everything is related in this ecosystem and it's all very important. And we wanna live a quality life here in St. Louis and there's beautiful things happening here. And this $15 an hour thing, is, it's totally reasonable. It's not asking too much and as a business owner, I'm proud to say that we are, we are cool with that. And uh, <laughs> instead of, thank you. Thank you. 
it's, it's got to happen. You know, we got to put people in front of the price of a cheeseburger, you know, that's more important, you know, and it's going to happen. So instead of running from it, we need to uh, get better at our efficiency in our businesses and we need to run towards it. We need to embrace it. We need to embrace the people that work for us and we need to train them and trust them to run our businesses properly and be paid well to do it. That's it. Again, thank all of you for um, your personal uh, experiences and, um, and your efforts, and certainly want to thank everybody here as well for uh, being a part of this effort. That, that's what's going to help us uh, move this over the finish line and uh, will help us do something good for um, not only St. Louis, but I think we'll set, we'll, we'll set a tone for uh, people throughout the region as well as the United States.